we're going to use the ratio test for the open interval of convergence to find the interval of convergence for this series. Notice how this series has nothing to do with Taylor series anymore. We are not trying to um, express any particular function or anything like that. We just want to know when will this series converge, meaning when will this series actually be something we can calculate. Let's take a look and see how it goes and I'll understand a little bit more when we're done. So remember, the idea is just like with a geometric series, we want to look at the ratio of terms. But unlike a geometric series, the ratio of terms is going to constantly change. It's not going to be the same ratio from one term to the next throughout the entire series. But we can still express the ratio of any term as the next term. So I'm going to take all of these n's and replace them with n plus 1. So n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 times, and I'm going to keep that in the numerator because it's easier, times x minus 5 to the n plus 1. And I'm going to divide all of that by the nth term. Dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'll just multiply by the reciprocal of my general term, n times x minus 5 to the nth. And then we'll simplify whatever we can. Do that with a couple of different colors here. Notice that the um, x plus 5 to the n plus 1, sorry, x minus 5 to the n plus 1 over x minus 5 to the nth. Anytime you have something raised to the n plus 1 power divided by something raised to the nth power, when you're done canceling them all out, there'll be one left in the numerator and none left in the denominator. So I'll put an x minus 5 in the numerator. The same thing is true for the 3 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1, except in this case, that leftover n is going to be in the denominator. Because however many 3's you have up here, you have one more of them in the denominator. So there'll be one extra 3 in the denominator. And then for the last part, the n plus 1 over n, we can't do any fancy any games with like the canceling like that. There's nothing you can do there. n plus 1 over n does not cancel. And for any term, any pair of terms um, on our list in our series, that will be the ratio of one term to the next term. What we care about is the limit of those terms as we get farther and farther down the list. So the limit of really the absolute value of those terms as we get farther and farther down our list. So that would be the limit as n approaches infinity of x minus 5 over 3 times n plus 1 over n. Notice how I already separated out the parts with the n from the parts that don't have an n. Because the parts that don't have an n, I'm going to need to look at their limits separately, and it'll be a very easy limit to evaluate. The parts that do have an n, I can take the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over n and say the limit as n approaches infinity would just be the horizontal asymptote of this. Horizontal asymptote would be the ratio of n over n, so that's just y equals 1. And so L would be 1 times the limit as n approaches infinity of x minus 5 over 3 is just x minus 5 over 3. Sorry, it's the absolute value of x minus 5 over 3. And so we go to the last part of our ratio test, which is when is this ratio, or the limit of the ratio, less than 1? So we want to know when is this absolute value less than 1, or when is that absolute value in between when is the x minus 5 over 3 in between negative 1 and 1? So we can multiply everything by 3 and add 5 to everything. So x must be between 2 and 8. That is what we call the open interval of convergence. As long as x is between 2 and 8, then if I were to plug 
So if I were to plug any number between 2 and 8 in here, this infinite series would actually converge on a number. I could keep adding terms forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and I wouldn't get an infinitely big sum. I would get a finite sum. A quick reminder that when we talk about the radius of convergence, it just means half the distance between 2 and 8. So obviously it's 6 units from 2 to 8, so the radius of convergence is half of that, 3. Let's do another example, and we'll see how sometimes, you know, funny things can happen. So if we look at, for this one, we're going to find the interval of convergence for an actual Taylor series. So we're actually talking about a function here, the Maclaurin series of cosine of x, which hopefully we remember is the sum of, it's alternating, negative 1 to the nth, of x to the 2n over 2n factorial. So we'll go through our process. Start with the ratios. The ratio of any of the n plus 1th term, and I'm going to write the negative 1 here, but it is not going to end up mattering because um, we're going to take the absolute value of it anyway, so I don't really care if it's positive or negative. The um, x to the 2n plus, sorry, x to the 2n Remember that what we're doing here to start with is we're putting an n plus 1 in for that n, which is being multiplied by 2. So when you multiply 2 times n plus 1, you get 2n plus 2. And the same thing will happen in the denominator here also, 2n plus 2 factorial, divided by r sub n, which means times the reciprocal, so that's times 2n factorial over negative 1 to the nth times x to the 2n. And we can simplify this. Um, the, we'll just put the negative here because technically it's correct. x to the 2n plus 2 over x to the 2nth. Well, you got to think to yourself, how many more x's are in the numerator than the denominator? Before, it was just one more, but this time, there's two more x's in the numerator than the denominator, because whatever 2n is, 2n plus 2 is two more than that. So the numerator will have to be x squared, and the factorials are the opposite. The denominator is bigger. 2n factorial will cancel out almost all of 2n plus 2 factorial, except the two biggest numbers of 2n plus 2 factorial are 2n plus 2 times 2n um, plus 1. And then after that, it would be 2n factorial, and that would cancel out the 2n factorial in the numerator. So after everything's done canceling out, this is my r, sub, my r sub n. And then the limit, as this approaches infinity, sorry, written in there, I'm not sure why. L is the limit of this R as N approaches infinity. So that's the limit of, it's again, it's really the absolute value. So I'm going to ignore that negative entirely. The absolute value of X squared over 2N plus 2 times 2N plus 1 as N approaches infinity. And again, I can, I can pull out the X, separate the X squared from all those N's. The limit as n approaches infinity of x squared would just be x squared, but it's not going to matter. Because the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. Again, think of this as the horizontal asymptote. We have 1 over 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. That has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So this would equal x squared times 0. So my L is just equal to zero. It no longer matters what X is for every single value for X. If I go far enough along my terms, the ratio from one term to the next will just be essentially zero. We'll have a limit of zero. And since zero is always less than one, the interval of convergence is all real numbers.
there are no values for x you could ever find that would make the limit of the ratio from one term divided by the term before it ever bigger than 1. So the interval of convergence is all real numbers, and there is no radius of convergence. It's infinitely big. And this explains why when we graphed the cosine of x earlier this unit, we saw that if you added more terms, it just kept going. It just kept following the curve all along as far as you needed it to go.